Hey there, you awesome composers. It's time to talk about saxophones. This is our Studio Saxophone Trio. Studio Saxophone Trio is the follow-up to our Studio Strings. And when I say follow-up, it's more conceptually thinking. In Studio Strings, you have the ability to either choose a solo instrument or multiple solo instruments and create your own chamber ensembles or full ensembles. And Studio Saxophone sort of takes over with that concept. Um, we thought about in the beginning of this library to actually create three different saxophone libraries, but then we were like, no, it's cool to have them all together because you can do more of that big band kind of feel. Um, a lot of music has one or two, sometimes three saxophones playing together, so why not give you all the choices to choose whatever you want? And one of the beautiful things about the library is that all the players in the library, the three awesome players we had, had so much personality. The baritone has sort of a softer, darker quality to it, Tenor saxophone one is more modern, bright, more like David Sanborn or almost Kennedy at times, even though we're gonna do a soprano library that's gonna be an extension to this one, that's gonna be full on Kennedy. And then we have our tenor saxophone two as well, which is more about that old school crackle, vinyl noise, sort of jazzy, slightly sleazy at times, dare I say. And when I say sleazy, that means we have three different types of legatos in the library and the top layer of the legato when you play heart in the keys, triggers that 80s kind of vibe where everything is just like almost vulgar at times. But for the most part, I suppose it's not the best way of advertising saxophones. You can play them really soft and expressively as well. Um, the players were awesome. And when we talk about deep sampling sometimes, I think a lot of people have the expectation that, well, I buy a saxophone library and it should just do everything that a saxophone can do. That's totally true. And this library is certainly about that with any articulation you can think of, layered legatos, staccato, double staccatismo, two different types of super short notes, macado sustains, trills, anything you can think of, hundreds of different types of effects, arcs that are dynamically layered at multiple lengths. We have it all. But more importantly, we have people with personality. Each of the players really, really had a beautiful personality infused into the sample. So think about your favorite artist, for example. It's not like that they play completely statically like a machine, but rather they have personality. And that's exactly what this library is about. Um, we also had the fortune that the three players have played together before, so it sounds awesome when you play them in an ensemble as well. So this is the Swiss army knife of deep sample saxophone frenzy. You can really take it far. And in this video here, I'm gonna take you into the DAW. We're gonna listen individually to the three different saxophones and see what they can really do when they're pushed, particularly with focus on the legato. That's obviously the one that we're all listening to, you know, how real does it really sound when you play melodic lines and um, you be the judge. All right, let's turn on the saxophone engines and get into things. If you look here at the UI, you're gonna see that we have three different saxophones here on your instrument page. And right now they're all loaded and um, you can click on them here to load and unload them. And this is the way you create your own saxophone band. Over here, you've got the articulation page. And one thing that's important to notice is that whatever I'm gonna show you, even for one of these saxophones, you can be 100% sure that the exact same articulation system was recorded for each of the three ones. This collection is 100% symmetrical, so it's for all three of the saxophones. If you look here under our traditional category, we have staccato, we have staccatissimo one and two. We felt that the character and the saxophones were unique enough to warrant two different types of staccatissimos. All these guys, of course, round robin, velocity layered. We got Mikado, we got sustains, really beautiful sustains, and another type of sustains with vibrato as well. We have our three layer dynamic legato. We have trills whole and trills half, and that's just on the traditional page here. On the arcs, you have three different types of arcs each of them at different time lengths and recorded at multiple velocities as well. So it's a beautiful way of getting those sort of more expressive qualities, more of that motion-like saxophone if you need that. Under the performance category, and I'll show you this in great lengths as well, we have different types of styles of short deep sample phrases that really allows you to do more of the sort of big band licks, like da 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 like that kind of style, which is really hard to do with traditional samples because you're essentially triggering um, staccato or staccatissimo samples with legato in them. And then we have another page here called effects that contains virtually all the different types of common runs and scoops that you can do uh, with the saxophone. We also have the awkward flutter tongue, which is the weirdest sounding thing for a saxophone. But uh, let's put a conclusion to my endless stream of words here and uh, let's just listen to what it can do. Starting here with our tenor saxophone two, it has that very jazzy old school film noir kind of vibe to it. Thank you. 
I think one thing we sort of missed the boat on in sampling until just like recent years is the fact that one instrument or two or three create completely different colors and it's an awesome tool to have in front of you. I would almost argue it's more important than microphone positions, which you can fluently, by the way, control down here. Um, let me turn on tenor saxophone one and just play these guys together. And this is how easy it is. Because the articulation system is completely symmetrical, you can just click here and have two or three of them playing together, no matter what you do in the keys or no matter what articulation you're triggering. And a quick shout out to our 1985 passionate piano sustain patch here, um, just using the mixed microphone position. And to Eric Persing's absolutely beautiful trillion bass here, which is a beautiful piece of sample gold. One of those things you just come back to um, even after all these years. Beautiful. All right, let's take a listen to our tenor saxophone one, only playing legato. <laughs> And do forgive me for the sort of uh, overly 80s sounding reverb here. Um, it just sounded good with this one here. We could turn it down and just get a... But I think it's uh, a little more fun maybe to put reverb on it. Um, let me just try to play one more thing <laughs> with it here. And uh, let's turn the real reverb up here to like 23%. Uh, it's graciously baptized in reverb. Um, I want to show you just the different types of dynamically layered legato. And let me just play the most common phrase you could possibly do on a saxophone just to show how the legato works.
Or if you play hard on the keys, you can trigger that sort of more dramatic uh, 80s kind of style. Um, let me try to do that and then show what happens when you go down again in dynamics and make it soft. All in one fluent phrase. And that's just me playing live on the keys. The only thing I'm using is the mod wheel while I'm playing in legato fashion. And that's really the way an instrument should be. You shouldn't have to sit and fiddle on a UI and click a million different buttons or heavy articulation switching. For me, it should just work when we play it. So this is what it sounds like. And you can fluently weave yourself in and out of dynamics. And a really good advice, and uh, maybe I should just trigger it again here. Try to look down here what I'm doing in regards to the phrasing because the legato for saxophone is very dependent on your small sort of little triggers here. You can see I have a bunch of half steps and whole steps that are triggering those sort of run building qualities in the instrument. And those are important for your phrasing or your ornamentation, um, depending on your style um, of saxophone. But uh, let me try to trigger it one more time here and just follow the string down here and uh, notice um, all these little uh, details. So it doesn't hurt to play a little more elaborately when you play for saxophone um, in legato style. Let me try to just isolate one example here um, of uh, what I mean with phrasing and ornamentation. Notice this little note up here. It actually does trigger legato and it gives the saxophone a little bit of a squeak. And um, it just uh, creates a beautiful, little more flowery type of sound. And here's another example. You can see I'll be doing this run up here and then I'll play some of the melody. And then this part here actually has the same note repeated. And to give it a little more variance in the sound so you're not triggering the same sample, I'll just go in and put a little bit of legato transition here. Um, again, it gives that little flowery or sort of blooming approach to the instrument. And it's actually one of the first time I've ever been able to use truly repeated legatos on the same note. That trick really works. 
Another way of doing it is um, we actually have articulations for these things as well. Under performance here, you're gonna find our meso tremolos that will allow you to get do 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 um, sync to your rhythm as well if you wanna get that. I would do that if I was to make a super, super elaborate like photorealistic demo, I might add small details like that for those same note kind of things. But I think this is pretty good. Coming out of the box, this is about as good as it gets. All right, let's shift our attention to the third saxophone in the saxophone trio. So before we're listening to the two different tenor saxophones, but we also have this gorgeous baritone saxophone in the library. And one of the neat aspects about the user interface here is that you can click on any of these slots here, and then you can just find whatever articulation you want. Let's say you want trills and half notes, and then they're loaded, and these are automatically assigned to key switches. You can see them out here. Um, you can control the volume for each articulation here as well. But this is the fastest way you can possibly build your own articulation matrix, assign it to key switches, and you're done. And let me show that in full effect. I've loaded a variety of articulations here. We've got a little sequence playing down here. So try to follow what happens here, and then uh, look at the timeline down here as well. <laughs> Let's try to compare the three different saxophones. Uh, let me trigger this little melody down here and then try it on all three ones so you can hear the difference between them and then uh, we'll try them together as well. Let's try the same exercise actually for um, one of the deep sample phrases in this case. Da -da -da. Oh, and let me also show you how the microphones work. It's super simple, and this is actually the way I would prefer to do it. Um, down here, you have a single slider that allows you to go from very, very near field 
up to sort of middle range and further into the room. Um, let me just try to play um, a pattern here while I'm sliding this back and forth so you can hear the true sound of the microphones just being merged. And I'll turn the reverb off for this one too. There's also a few other things that helps the experience if you sort of want to dial it in a little more. Um, I love these guys here because you can really color the instrument. Uh, I like to have this noise button on here, which is just mechanical natural noise from the sessions. You can barely hear them, they're just way, way back in the mix, but it creates a little bit more life in it. Offset here controls your legato speed. So down here you have the longest transition and if you move it up here, you're gonna narrow the offset in the legato interval and make it tighter. So if you really play fast, you wanna have it more up here. If you're more slow ballad, you wanna have it down here. And the rest of it is taken care of on the keys. Um, all the demonstrations I was showing you earlier in this one did not even use the offset feature, but it's there if you wanna get a little more advanced with it. So yeah, there you have it. A little journey into our studio saxophones, giving you an idea about what you can do with this library. And, um, and I highly encourage you to check out our SoundCloud demos as well. We have a vast selection of gorgeous demos that are in all sorts of directions by some wonderful demo composers. So see you in the next one. All right, it's time to um, light the candle. And um, with that, we're gonna use this contraption here, which I've actually never seen before. You got matches and then you got this like kind of stone thing. It works like that. And then you got the candle. Why am I doing that? Why is it candle time? Oh no. Oh no, it won't turn on. Maybe it's not candle time. Oh no. Please work.